the old uh there we go we got everything working now so we're, we're in good shape so <clears throat> been a busy day i don't know if you caught the uh the live earlier but uh coach brent and i had a a great afternoon we're out at clark road working with some young kids teaching them some new things about uh exercise and their workout a lot of the same things that we talked about here we did a nice activation period followed with a little bit of imposed demand and uh some stretching and recovery and I, I gotta tell you, we saw some of the uh, the young ones walking around later on in the parking lot, commenting about how their legs were a little bit sore. And uh, Brett and I kind of chuckled because they got something coming in the next couple of days. But uh, if any of you folks out there from uh, from Clark Road are watching, uh, thanks so much for working hard. It was an awesome experience. You really welcomed us. So uh, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about um, putting together your workout in terms of the order of the exercises. Uh, if you missed the first part of the series, check the link in the description, the link on uh, the bio and uh, Instagram. Off to our YouTube page, we got the uh, the previous three videos up there about uh, how to structure your workout, uh, way to choose your exercises in terms of movement patterns, and the importance of rep ranges. And today, what we're going to talk a little bit about is sequencing exercises. Now, when you when it comes to sequen sequencing exercises, again, it, it has to do with kind of the adaptation you're looking for. But there are there are some general guidelines if you're just looking for overall health and fitness that you may want to consider. So, one of the first things you want to think about is is think about putting your big exercises first. So these are the exercises where hey, you're, you're using the most amount of muscle, you're using, lifting the most amount of weight. These are your big, heavy compound movements, things like squats, things like deadlifts, uh, multi-joint pressing, bench pressing, rowing, overhead pressing. And there's two reasons that, that this works well is, one, it's, it's when you're freshest. You know, you just finished your activation, everything's turned on, you still got full energy tanks, the nervous system is popping, and that's probably when you're going to have the, the best motivation to, to really push and really grind. Um, and you kind of get your energy systems up as well. The other good reason for it is you get a little bit of what's called, you know, further activation. So imagine in each of your body, you got the, these motor units, and once you hit them with a, a big force, with a big exercise, you turn these motor units on. So when you exercise a little bit later on in terms of more isolation, more specific type exercises, those big motor units are more likely to be recruited and, and get a little bit more, um, a little bit more activation and a little bit more, uh, I guess, stimulation to, to grow. And so as we progress through the workout, so as you move to the workout, that's where you want to move to a little bit lighter and, and smaller weights. So let's say, for example, if we're, we're doing um, heavy squats to start oh, and then doing reps of eight, reps of 10, you know, with heavier weight, maybe what we want to do in the next exercise is move to like a, a single leg movement, like maybe uh, walking lunges with maybe a little bit higher volume. Uh, so you, at this point in the workout, you're getting a little bit more tired. So you want to go with, with things that are a little bit lighter, maybe a little bit more volume, because what we're also doing is we're changing our energy systems a little bit. And that's something I'll talk a little bit deeper about there in the, the next topic about energy systems and considerations for when you're training. But as we move through the workout, what I usually like to do and what we like to do as we program is we increase also our density a little bit. We do a little bit more work in a little bit less time. So a little bit shorter rest, a little bit higher reps, and that's the way we like to progress. And then as we get towards the end of the workout, that's where you like to do kind of, um, you know, maybe, a, I, I don't like the term corrective exercises, but I don't have a better term. If you have a better suggestion, I please send it my way. But maybe doing like smaller muscles, if we're talking bodybuilding, or doing more very specific movements that are, are trying to make up for a movement deficit. Now, you got to remember, by the time you get to the end of the workout, you're, you're really tired. So you want to Try and stay away from really complicated movements like say for example olympic snatches or, or cleans or or high things that really demand a whole lot of coordination to save you from, from injury and that was also a really good time to do some energy systems work so if you're programming your workout and you're going to be lifting some weights and doing some cardio in the starts you want to be more biased to more more weight training heavier weights that kind of adaptation as you progress through the work but you kind of switch the focus in the middle is kind of a balance and towards the end is where we get a lot more energy system work and for somebody who wants to do you know cardiovascular work you want to put that at the end of your work as opposed to the beginning of your workout and again that has a lot to do with kind of the energy systems that you use but again it also has to do with fatigue doing a hard cardio workout right before a hard training session can really hamper the effectiveness of that training session it can really limit the the way you use the explosiveness of the exercises and really kind of limit the way you adapt. You know, doing it at the end, at that point, what we're doing is we're trying to create a little bit of a metabolic demand. We're already exhausted, so pushing from a, a cardiovascular or an exhaustion resistance training perspective 
in a pre-exhausted state is not a bad thing. You know, what you want to try and do is avoid training high explosive, high power, high strength in an exhausted state. That's going to be limiting, but it can actually be beneficial if you do it the other way. So in terms of a summary, you know, real kind of basic, basic rules is, is keep your, your multi-joint, your heavy, your weight training exercises kind of at the start of the program. And then as you progress, move to, to higher volume, lighter weights, more kind of energy systems, metabolic work. So again, if, uh, if you have any questions, by all means, please shoot them my way. If you ever want to chat about your, uh, your workout or kind of the way you're structuring your program, um, and you shoot me a message and set up a time to chat. Uh, I'm kind of interested in talking about this kind of stuff. Um, and if you missed the, the previous three videos, be sure to check out the YouTube channel. I'll be posting this one up as well. And then tune in uh, next Tuesday night again, 9 o'clock. We'll be talking a little bit more about energy systems so you, you kind of understand that the way your body responds to exercise. And again, that helps, make, helps you make better decisions in terms of where you put things based on the adaptation that you're trying to create. So... Hope everybody had a good night. I, I know it was a little bit short, but uh, that's sometimes for the best. All right, folks, take care, and I uh, look forward to seeing you later on in the week. Bye-bye.